Hey, you guys. I'm walking in the rain. Let me try to do this. I'm holding the camera and the umbrella. I got mad skills. <laughs> so, I'm actually on my second walk of the day. It's my car back there. I'm the only car. <laughs> How can I do this? Only car in the whole in the whole joint because no one wants to walk in the rain. This is just a little walk. I um, went to my park earlier. Well, not earlier. Um, I just left there 20 minutes ago. But and I looked at my fit my Fitbit and today I didn't do the full three miles so I have a little bit to go to get to my three miles so I'm walking through this other park just to tap it off and let me tell you guys something amazing that happened when I was at the other park so I get to the park and there is only, there are only two other cars in the parking lot and I made the third. One person pulled up maybe a few seconds before me because I saw her pull in down the road. So a few, she was a few seconds ahead of me and the other car was already there and no one was in it. So I stalled a little bit because I don't like to walk in step with other people. So I was stalling, getting out of the car so that she could be a little bit ahead of me on the trail. <laughs> well, I gather my things, get out of the car. As soon as I turn the little bend, she's there. Her dog is sitting on the trail facing the direction I'm coming from and she's trying to get him to go and he won't go so i'm about to walk over this bridge here and there's water down there i always got to find the water spots because they just uh revitalize my soul this bridge looks pretty uh slippery though so anyway so i turn the little bend and there they are. He's sitting on the trail. And she, I said, hi. She says, hi. And she's like, I don't know what he's doing. He won't go. He's just sitting here. And I said, he's waiting for me. And <laughs> I, I asked her if I could pet him. And she said, yes, he was such a good boy. He just sat there so regal and let me pet him. And then I continued walking and then they continued walking. Now there's a point a few minutes into the trail where you get to choose left or right. So they were looking like they were going to go right. So I chose left again, because it's a nice rainy day. I want to get my walk in. I just want to, you know, I talk all day at work. I just want to decompress, hear the rain, hear the birds hear the water and just enjoy being outside especially in an empty park and back store back track a little bit on my way to the park i don't normally take a weapon with me when i go to the park um but i knew it would be empty and there are a lot of deep pockets in the park so i figured i should just take something with me just so that i can defend myself if i have to so I grabbed a knife that one of my coworkers gave me. He's a hunter and he goes on like serious hikes and stuff. And he gave me a hunting knife. So I grabbed the hunting knife and put it in my pocket, which is bizarre because that's not something I do. I don't just grab knives and take them outside with me. But today I did. So I have the knife in my pocket. And so we're walking on the trail and I take the left thinking they're gonna take the right. And I'm walking, I'm humming, and just, you know, I stopped to look at the geese in the, in the water, and um, 
next thing I know, out of the corner of my eye, I see walking side by side with me is the dog. And I look, I look down and she says, I'm so sorry. I tried to get him to go the other way and he insisted on coming this way. She's like, I'm really, really sorry. And I was like, no worries. And she's like, he must really like you because he's been walking behind you this whole time. Like he's your dog. She's like, he's like right at your heels. And I didn't even know he was there. That's how quiet and stealthy they were. Um, and plus, you know, with the water and the, um, I'll give you guys a little bit of VY talk. With the water and with the, um, the rain, you know, I, I just didn't hear them. I didn't hear them there. So we keep, we continue on. And then there's lots of different opportunities to make turns off of that path and go onto another path. So I take another path. Sure enough, they go the same way. And at this point for a split second, I was like, dude, you can force him to do something different. And I didn't say that to her, didn't make a face. And she can't see me anyway. I have this big ass umbrella. Do you see how big my umbrella is? So I just see really the dog I, and, and her feet. I don't see her. Um, but he's walking right with me, side by side with me, like almost rubbing up against my leg. And she's like, I don't know what's happening. She's like, he, every move you make, he's like right there. And so then I said to her, maybe he's my guardian angel. Maybe he was supposed to be here because I did feel unsettled about my walk today. And I didn't tell her about the knife because it would have probably freaked her out. But I was like, I, I was feeling unsettled about my walk today. And now here he is. She was like, I don't know what to make of it. And I was like, he's here on purpose. He's supposed to be here with me. He is, he is my guardian angel today. And then she was like, I can't wait to get home. And she's like, he's not even my dog. <laughs> she's like, he's my son's dog. I'm just the grandma, I'm house sitting for him. She's like, but this isn't like normal for him. And um, so every, every move I made, he was right there. And I just let him walk along with me. And at one point, like she was picking up her step and I slowed down. Um, just because we were going uphill, you know, me and my hills, so I got to catch my breath. So we're going up the hill and he got to the top, like a little bit ahead of me and sat down and waited for me. <laughs> he waited for me. And she like, and he sits all the way down. I said, oh, and I caught up to them. I said, maybe he's tired of walking. And then as soon as I got to where he was, he jumped up. She was like, he's waiting for you. <laughs> She's like, this is unbelievable. Like, I don't understand what's happening. And yeah, he waited for me at the top of the hill. And um, we continued walking. We walked the whole path together. And I didn't take all of my normal ins and outs and interloops and stuff to give me my full three miles, just because um, it did feel a little awkward. <laughs> Um, you know, she and I were making small talk a little bit, but for the most part, we didn't do a lot of talking. We talked about the weather a little bit and how crazy the wind is. Um, she told me the dog's name, his name is Duke and her son's name is Luke <laughs> and, um, that she wanted grandchildren and, um, that was really it. It was a nice conversation, but it wasn't forced and, um, it was just a light conversation. It was really just all about the dog. Like he was there for me he was there for me and I thought that that was like so amazing and I don't know if you can tell like my eyes are like tearing up about it because it's like that dog was there for me he was there for me and I'm like thank you God thank you for sending that sweet boy to go with me on my walk because that was super special like super special so yeah, I'm out at a different park down the road, down the road a piece. Oh, there, is, there are mosquitoes out. It's 
crazy and they're all on the top of my umbrella. But anyway, so I'm on this other path and I should have been walking the whole time so I could get my steps in, which is the, the whole purpose of being out here. But I just had to stop and concentrate on that story and recall it before I forgot any parts of it. But I thought that was so cool. Like, I had a guardian angel. And that's not the first time that's happened to me. One time when I was younger, I was walking home and we didn't live in the best neighborhood. Like, in hindsight, it was a bad neighborhood. But at the time, I never felt unsafe. Um, which I think has served me well because there aren't many places that I feel unsafe. I could go into the worst neighborhoods in Newark, New Jersey or in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and feel okay. I don't have a lot of street smarts, but I'm, I'm aware. I'm an aware person and pay attention to my surroundings. And I just trust that God is gonna, is gonna have my back. So I don't worry too much about those types of things. But, uh, yeah, well, this is a flower mill, home of the Gilt Edge, Edge Flower. I thought there was another trail over there because there's a lot of water right there, see? But the trail stops here. But anyway, I, uh, so yeah, I don't often feel unsafe. Um, I just make sure that I stay aware of my environment and and do what I need to do. But when I was younger, I was walking home one day and it was getting late. And I was supposed to be home before dark and I don't know where I was coming from now, but it was getting darker. And I had to walk up this hill. I have a problem with the hills my whole life. <laughs> I had to walk up this hill. And I'm like, I can't walk any faster. And I'm, I need to get home, it's getting dark. Like the sun is setting rapidly. All of a sudden, this big ass dog comes out of nowhere and starts walking beside me. And I am afraid at first, but then I'm coming up with scenarios in my head as to how I'm gonna get my parents to let us keep this dog because he is my dog. He is walking with me and he belongs to me. And I'm thinking of scenarios of how I'm gonna get them to let me keep him. We already have a cat at home. Her name was Snoopy. Snoopy lived to be like 25 years old, by the way. Um, but yeah, we already had a cat and there's a whole bunch of stuff in this grass. It looks like black beans. I wonder if that's some kind of animal poop. But yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, how am I gonna get to keep this dog? He walked with me the whole way. He wouldn't let me pet him. He stayed side by side with me, but never let me pet him. I wish I had a raft. Look down there. There's a whole whole system of water going on down there. So we get home and get to the door, to the, to the pathway to my front door, the walkway. And I turn around and he's gone. Almost like instantly gone. And I was like, what the hell happened to the dog? And some part of me was relieved because now I didn't have to worry about trying to beg to keep this dog and explain, explain him. But then a part of me was worrying about this dog because now is he homeless? Does he have a family? Where did he go? Where's my dog? I never saw him again. Never, ever, ever, ever saw him again in my whole life. Where did he go? <laughs> Which reminds me of another time. Oh my God, there's this big ass bug. Uh, 
Why are there bugs out here? It's not, it's not time. Anyway, um, so <laughs> it reminds me of another time where I, my dog had passed away. He was the best dog in the whole wide world. And I was so sad. I was so sad and so devastated, so heartbroken, like crying for days, nonstop crying. I had a headache, my heart hurt, my chest hurt. I had the snot bubbles, the whole thing. That was my, my best friend, that dog. And he died in a very unfortunate way. And I was devastated. So, two days later, after I picked my ass up off the floor and went outside, because I'm a nature person, although I'm scared of bugs, I'm a nature person. I can't be disconnected from outside for too long. So I go for a drive. While I'm driving, this dog runs out into the road. I have to stop short. And my dog had died by getting hit by a car. Um, and I was with him when it happened. So I almost hit this dog and he looks exactly, oh well, she, I later found out, she looks exactly like my dog, but a younger version. My dog was a German Shepherd Border Collie mix with one white spotted paw. This dog looked exactly like him as a puppy, as a teenager dog, <laughs> and with the one spotted paw. So I say, oh my God, I, open the car door and say, what are you doing out here? She jumps in the car. No collar, no nothing. Jumped in the car with me. And uh, so <laughs> I take her home. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Ron is gonna flip the heck out. Get this dog home, open the door, she runs in. And my, my brother and my nieces and nephews lived with me, at the, lived with Ron and I at the time. And he's like, what the hell's going on, my brother? And I'm like, I just found this dog. She was running, he was running in the street and I almost hit him. And then my niece and nephew, they're like, Damien's back. And I'm like, no, it's not Damien, it's another dog. But doesn't she look like him? And they're like, yeah. So <laughs> she stays overnight. I love her, I pet her, she comforts me, and the next day we go for walks. I feel sad, still unbelievably sad, but comforted by this dog. Then, in the middle of the night, she needs to go to the bathroom. And she didn't, she never went to the bathroom in the house. And if I wasn't so covered in my grief, I would have realized that this dog was trained and she belonged to someone, but she didn't have a collar on. Um, so she needed to go out. She alerted my brother that she needed to go out by hitting the door and he let her out. No collar, no leash. He just let her out. And when I woke up in the morning, he said, the dog's gone. And I'm like, what do you mean? like she asked to go out to the bathroom I let her out and she bolted she took off she's gone and I was like oh well okay why didn't you you know at first I was like why didn't you put a leash on her it's like I don't know she seemed like she knew what she was doing or whatever so I'm like okay so then like two years later I'm walking in a park and I see her and the owner tells me that once she ran away 
for a day and a half. Guess who had his dog? <laughs> Me! So apparently she must have been running around, accidentally got turned around, and then I kidnapped her. I kidnapped the dog. I kept her hostage, and then my unsuspecting brother let her out and she got away. <laughs> And it was meant to happen that way because had it been me, she would have had on a collar and a leash and she would not have gotten back to her family where she belonged. So I think she was sent to comfort me. So I think comforting me comes in the sense of dogs. That's what, that's what I say all that to say. That's my conclusion. And um, yeah, so I got my three miles in my, my watch. It, um, it vibrates can't see it from here but my watch see the green it vibrates when I get to my goal so I got to my goal a few seconds ago before getting back to the car so yeah this is a long walk it out video today <laughs> but yeah you guys uh have a good night thanks for watching now I gotta do the I can't even put my glove in my mouth this time to take it off because I was petting the dog. So hold please. All right, you guys have a good day.